Well, hey there, this is Justin from CartoonSmart.com, and uh, today I've got a starter kit that I am presenting. Uh, I didn't actually build this myself, but this, this is kind of like uh, me as the, the big action director presenting some sort of foreign film that he discovered and wants to bring to American audiences, like Quentin Tarantino Presents. Well, I am presenting a very cool template that uh, two um, extremely talented German developers uh, put together. Let's go ahead and give them uh, some credit at their website right away. Uh, they, they created this app, and... Um, it, uh, it's available in the, the iPhone store, and it's a uh, universal app, iPhone or iPad. It uh, supports all the high-resolution devices out there, including the new iPad. But um, following the success of this, they've also put together the, the starter kit for it. And uh, I'm going to give you guys some very thorough video documentation uh, for it because... Um, after playing around with it a few day, for a few days, I think it's uh, it's worth talking about um, the the quickest way possible to get you guys started and modifying this. And uh, fortunately, it it is very easy to um, add new levels and things like that. You just kind of have to know what to do, and that's uh, is why I am here. Uh, let's take a uh, just a fast look at um, just one of the first boards here, and I'll uh, keep talking through this. So it's not just a little gameplay trailer here, but uh, you can see that I am running around. It's a kind of your typical side scroller, jumping up and down. This is a mix of uh, uh, Box 2D and Cocos 2D, along with a program called Tiled, which we're going to look at in just a moment. Uh, this will give you kind of an idea of uh, the things you can do in the game: get more health, uh, pick up a special item, shoot enemies, of course, uh, capture the flag, which it's transports you to the uh, the next level, and then uh, you've also got automatically scrolling levels which of course are kind of a staple in um, 2D side scrolling games and just makes it more difficult your player kind of has to keep up with the uh, the side of the level that is constantly going to push you off into a cliff or something like that and you can see I'm getting pretty good at the game now too and um, you saw a little teleporter in there as well that uh, can transport you to another um, part of the game oh and actually you know what I, I did so good there I got at least one star uh, one aspect of this game is that you can set a uh, kind of a time or score range and depending on how well you do on the board do you get uh, these star medals which will show up later in the uh, the menu over here so you can see I've done pretty good so far and uh, you know speaking of the menu uh, each one of these uh, levels is represented you know numerically over here and then uh, if you have more than 10 gives you a whole other chapter's worth so you can kind of just drag along the screen here uh, you can name your chapter whatever you want uh, I put together 12 levels actually like seven other seven of them are identical I just want to show you guys that uh, you have this option here and of course uh, depending on how many levels you have you can just kind of keep swiping over to the left here and making uh, new mega chapters worth of uh, uh, levels so let me uh, kind of mute that and move this off to the side so bear with me for another couple minutes. I just want to keep giving you guys uh, the quickest overview possible of how simple it is to uh, modify this kit. Uh, if you had bought it, go into your resources folder, and uh, we saw the Xcode project up there. But uh, inside of the Commander Cool folder, go down into your resources, and you can see how well organized this is. Uh, there's a whole separate folder just for your maps, and these are your levels. Uh, and uh, these are .tmx files, which are generated by a program called Tiled Map Editor, all right, which is available for free over here. If you're gonna, if you're on the Mac, you wanna download this version of it. And once you get that going, uh, you can open up, um, well, this first level, the Map uh, Tutorial .tmx, was the first level that we played in the game, all right. And uh, you obviously get some indication that. Uh, Here's the level, okay, we saw run, these instructions and things like that uh, as we play through it. And um, a lot of the level that you're gonna put together by simply painting tiles over here, all right? So this uh, tile set is included and it is really simple to just kinda uh, you know grab some artwork and if I was actually on the uh, a layer I should be painting on, you can um, paint them in there like so. So uh, for example, there I've just made a box. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Uh, if I were to save this out and republish the game, you would see this box in there. Uh, this isn't uh, collidable. Uh, that's um, something that we'd set up on a separate layer and define 
uh, with a polygon shape. But uh, we'll get into stepping through all that stuff a little bit later. I do want to just give you guys a, just a, the quickest overview possible here, so you can kind of see what's um, what's happening. And um, it's it's really not hard to put uh, all this stuff together. There's certain objects, uh, for example, these coins or the player himself that. Uh, we just define in here, but we don't uh, give any sort of artwork to that. That gets set up inside of um, at runtime inside of uh, Xcode. But we just basically kind of just you know lay out the type of object that is going to be represented on the on the level inside of tiled here. Uh, and then we save it out, and like I said, you can kind of republish it. And uh, one of the coolest things uh, that you get with this template, and you might have noticed it uh, in the demonstration earlier, that the app I was running was not actually um, in the simulator of Xcode. It was uh, running as a separate Mac app itself. So you do have that option of uh, creating actual Mac apps, not just uh, iOS applications. But um, this uh, this does support all the, you know, the iPad, iPhone, all that good stuff. So uh, we'll talk a lot about um, Tiled in just a little bit. But I also want to show you guys that. Um, Aside from building the levels, your probably your main bit of work is just adjusting some of the uh, the plist files or preferences files. And um, there's two ways you could kind of go about uh, examining this file. Uh, if you wanted, you could bring it up in a text editor, and you can see that it is just kind of set up like a uh, like your typical XML file. So here's like one big block of code that's just uh, defining what the first level is about. Okay, so. Um, if I were to, if I wanted to duplicate this and just paste it down here, unlock, um, I'd have two of the same level by, by doing that. Okay, so now I've made two level ones, all right? And this is what points to that .tmx file that you got right there. And you've, they've got, um, heaviness is, uh, is actually your... Uh, your difficulty. So one uh, represents that it's easy, two that it's medium, three that it's hard. And uh, in the game itself, it when you before you load a level, it uh, it tells you the difficulty. Uh, special item uh, that uh, is whether or not there's a special item on that board. Um, you can if there is, you would include a diamond to you know kind of make it difficult to go find. Your best scores are uh, a range that you feel. Um, are good scores okay so if any score between 140 and 150 uh, gets you uh, one star medal at the end of the board uh, 150 to 160 would get you two star medals and anything above 160 would get you three star medals and um, you can see that uh, they've kind of set in here different uh, score ranges uh, based on the board and of course that depends on how fast pl players can get through that board or how many coins they pick up along the way uh, and then you've got some other um, uh, boolean options in here for uh, whether or not the board is completed uh, you would want to set that to no or false um, for any uh, for all the boards you don't want to automatically make them completed and then uh, let's do this let's actually look at the other way you'd probably want to open up a um, a game data dot plist file which is this is kind of the cruder way of going about it but um, when I'm making new levels I like to just copy out those big blocks of code let's see if I if I open the if I just open this up and um, by default not in the Xcode. You can see that this is kind of a little bit of an easier way of looking at it. Okay, so levels, right? Item zero, that's level one, and here's what I was talking about before. Heaviness, set that to one, two, or three. Best scores, you can unfold that, and you get your score ranges. And of course, really the most important thing here is actually your tile map. So what TMX file um, is associated with that actual level and um, from there uh, you know you just really save out this file and suddenly you've got a brand new board in the menu okay so it's it's really just that easy if I were to pause this again and go back to the menu um, this isn't actually going to automatically reload uh, with a with another level in there because again you're looking at the Mac version which I'd have to actually publish out uh, one more time but um, you know, if I had saved out, you know, 20 more levels here, uh, that would be reflected over here in the, the menu. So it's uh, just that simple. There's really no other uh, coding that needs to be done uh, with that. And then aside from uh, the levels themselves, you're going to want to uh, consider changing um, 
the players, the enemies, the look of all that stuff. And again, this is very well organized. So in our player folder, you can see that you've got the um, the sprite sheets for uh, the, the player himself. And uh, let's actually open up the smaller version of that so you can get it all in one breadth. Uh, now, of course, uh, to go and kind of uh, put in your own artwork, you know, by selecting some of it and then drawing over it on top of the sprite sheet doesn't make any sense, okay? Your best bet is always going to be to just uh, recreate the sprite sheet itself, and uh, I'll talk more about that um, later, but just to uh, put your mind at ease, you do have all the raw resources in here. So here we go, CC player, right? Um, well, those are obviously just some of the frames inside. So, uh, yeah, here's the other ones. Uh, so what you'd want to do is uh, go and uh, change these files, all right, using, uh, you know, the, the p basic position here as a kind of a mock-up, right? You know, keeping things about in the same place. And then uh, what you'll do is end up um, taking all the images, mind you keeping the same names of the images and then regenerating out that uh, that sprite sheet again so let's see um, otherwise though there's a let's see raw resources actually let me go back to the um, inside of the resources folder itself but otherwise uh, aside from like things like the player um, you know a lot of this should be just kind of pretty obvious uh, things like blue stripes background you know wherever you see that in the game if you want to change out that uh, file all you got to do is just overwrite this one and of course keep the same size you know you don't want to really be messing around with the sizes of things um, you know so things like that if you want to change around the text it's just embedded in the uh, the image right there and um, of course nothing limits you from changing the code inside of uh, Xcode itself all right but um, to keep things simple, at first I'd go about just modifying uh, the levels, you know, possibly the artwork, and then if you want to get down to the nitty gritty of modifying the what you should consider the core engine of the game, um, then you know it's going to help to actually know a little bit of uh, Coco's 2D or some box 2D and things like that. And I and I've uh, like I said I've been through the code in this uh, project for a few days now and. Um, you know, once you get the hang of it, you kind of see um, what to do. But uh, but the good news is that you don't have to change the core engine of it if you don't want to. Okay, let's talk specifics now. Overview over, and let's get into actually building a level from scratch. All right, so by now everyone should have already downloaded their version of Tiled. And we are going to start things off uh, in here, although you could go to your Commander Cool folder and slide down to the resources, go to maps, and then open up the uh, map template. I would start with the one that doesn't have a HD extension. Actually, let me toss that out while I'm looking at it. And as usual, that warning there. All right, so um, you could build off of this. Uh, I'm going to start you guys back even further than that, though. So let's go and just go to new. All right, uh, you're going to go with orthogonal. And uh, 50 tiles by 50 tiles is, is pl probably plenty of tiles. Okay, that's a pretty big board. Uh, we're going to set the width to 32 and 32. Okay, so click on OK, and that gives us a uh, blank canvas here. All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, name it whatever, whatever we want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just save it in the, um, the same folder with everything else. Uh, we'll just call this uh, map uh, cartoon. Smart, how about that? Okay, and uh, if I was uh, creating the either HD or iPad HD uh, versions for this, I would go ahead and at this point put that in right now. And um, something, one big point that we've yet to talk about is uh, the uh, the Dash HD extension map will be for both the iPhone HD, okay, or the iPad one or two, okay, and and then the iPad, the Dash iPad HD is for the high resolution uh, iPads. So uh, the same map is shared between iPhone HD and 
iPad 1 and 2. All right, so at least you don't have to create that map. And uh, for now, though, let's just worry about uh, making the lowest resolution one, which is just going to be for the um, the iPhone 3GS or the any of the iPod touches that aren't uh, high res, which those, are, those devices are getting fewer and far between now. Okay, so go ahead and hit save. And uh, then what we will do is go and import in our first, um, our actually our only uh, tile set. So go over here to new tile set, and you're gonna want to just hit browse. Okay, pick the uh, map with the tile set without any sort of extension in here. So just click, double click on that one. And we're not going to set any margin or spacing in here. And uh, what if we did include that, um, that would mean that our tiles had been drawn with some sort of margin or spacing in there. All right, so maybe like one pixel. That's kind of typical. But uh, this map actually doesn't have any spacing. So just zero and zero. And then we're going to keep our tile width size at uh, 32 and uh, 32. For um, other versions, okay, for the um, HD maps it's it'll be 64 by 64 and then for the um, iPad HD that's gonna be 128 by 128 all right so keep that in mind as well okay now you can see our map uh, tile set has uh, been brought in here let's see if I can give us a little bit more room to um, to show this off oh, just see a little tiny flicker of the possibility there we go okay I think I'd rather see more tiles than uh, empty layers up there Okay, so uh, there's our all of our possible uh, tiles that we can use to uh, build a map with. And of course, too, you can bring in um, your own uh, tile set uh, as well. Just realize that um, these files do need to be imported in as a resource as well to Xcode. And you know, while we're talking about that, let's go ahead and do it because uh, this would be kind of a, a critical error on your part if you didn't go ahead and um, get these imported in because you'd crash right away as it was basically it's a missing resource okay so I'd keep things uh, just as organized as they are um, currently in the template so what we want to do is find maps okay there we go you can see that I've already imported in some maps that I was just playing around with and uh, these files are already in there of course if you did have your own tile sets those ones you'd want to import in as well and then the uh, file that I'm messing around with currently is this one so let's go ahead and uh, bring that in Okay, uh, if these aren't already checked off, go ahead and check them off. You just want to add this to all your uh, possible targets. Okay, so when it does a, a build for that particular target, this is just the iOS one and then Mac, and then there's a, a light one, which uh, I won't worry about now. But um, these are your two main ones here. But uh, just note that if you do forget to, ch to check these off, then essentially that resource isn't imported in uh, into that build. Uh, so you'd have a big problem. Okay, so just uh, go ahead and uh, click on finish over here and then so that we are ready to test this out when uh, we want to, let's also come down here and go over to our game data plist. I've already gone in here and uh, added in another level for us. Uh, it's, it's a level after the first one in there, that kind of tutorial map. So uh, let's just change this to, instead of map, Justin Cartoon Smart. Now, you don't have to ever include the dash HD or dash iPad HD extensions in your plist here. It's going to know to, to pick out the appropriate map. Now, of course, I haven't actually imported in that resource yet. So when I go to test things out, um, if I hadn't imported in or hadn't created those maps yet, I'm only going to want to test on the um, the iPhone simulator, uh, the the lower resolution one. Otherwise, it's going to come up as a missing resource be, resource because it can't find anything, can't find a map. Okay, so uh, let's just for now keep building the low res one, and uh, you, it is probably a good idea to have uh, the the map template open. Uh, if you do start from scratch like I am right now. And it's fine to start with this map template as well. I just kind of wanted to take you guys all the way back to ground zero. But uh, what we have over here are uh, different layers for different types of objects, okay? So there's a background layer, a foreground layer. Anything uh, that is drawn into the foreground 
uh, is going to be visible in front of the character. Okay, so that's a that's a big thing to note. And uh, when you are drawing, just be sure that you actually have that that particular layer selected. And then. Um, there's a different type of layer uh, that we don't draw onto really. It's uh, it's a, it's called an object layer, okay? And you can see that it's denoted by that little object shape right there. And uh, this is where we place objects, okay? And uh, they look more like this. This kind of big box that says player over top of it. And uh, we'll um, you know those will eventually be swapped in by things like the player, the coins, and and uh, those things. But for now, let's just go back over here to our empty one and let's change the name of this to background. And it is absolutely vital that you do keep that same name, otherwise, it won't actually get read into Xcode as the background. Okay, so uh, you can kind of choose um, wherever you want to begin here. Um, you know, you do have this rather large screen space to work with. Uh, typically, you know, you're only maybe seeing about this much of uh, your screen when uh, you're, you're playing a side scroller game you know things tend to move out to the right or left but that doesn't mean that you can't uh, you know have a board begin however you want you could uh, there could be a giant cliff here in the beginning for all it really matters and you know what come to think of it let's do something like that <laughs> we're the we're the level designers darn it we can uh, make whatever we want so I'm just gonna kind of paint down this way and you can see that uh, I'm using the stamp brush tool so I'm just going over here and I'm selecting a um, you know one of my uh, tiles and drawing right in there so grab that guy and this one right here oops hit undo on that okay and then I'm just gonna fill in all the middle part with this one tile over here seems appropriate to uh, go find some grass for the bottom of this. Let's just go ahead and put that all down that way. And then throw all that over there. Okay. That's good enough for right now. Uh, now, what we want to do is go over here to our map properties and um, go ahead and put in background image. All right, spelled exactly like that with a capital I, and then I'm going to write in uh, Dawn right here, okay? And that's going to find an image that has already been uh, imported as a resource to Xcode, and uh, it is named uh, Background uh, Dawn, and uh, let's see if I can find in here, oh, here it is, Backgrounds, that makes sense, Background Dawn. And since this is our non-HD uh, map, it's going to use uh, this particular background. Uh, actually, you know, with my current colors, let's go with, um, oh, that's a pretty one. Let's see what this one is. Oh, I like that even more. Okay. Um, I'll switch it to morning. And uh, if you wanted to include your own backgrounds in here, as you probably should, uh, Again, you would just create them with this uh, front part of the name as background underscore, and then put in whatever you want for the rest of it. Throw that in there, and of course, bring in as well your appropriate uh, dash iPad HD extensions. Uh, it looks like too there's also the dash Mac extensions if you're going to be uh, publishing this for the Mac as well. Okay, now uh, I'm done with that part of it. You can uh, go back over here to, to your template, look at the map properties for this, and oh, it looks like they didn't actually include a, um, a sound file in that one. We'll do this. Go over here to your maps and open up uh, map 19. This is a good one uh, to look at because it also includes the, uh, the auto scroll um, options as well. So go over here to map properties and you can see there's a few other options for you. Uh, background music, again that's a capital M right there and then it's picking out this uh, audio file again that's something you could uh, import it on your own as a resource, uh, your own music. Uh, and then uh, map scroll mode is set to auto and then your map scroll speed is set to 100. So if you did want your map to automatically scroll 
obviously include those properties as well and you can set the uh, the scrolling speed over there what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and uh, copy the sound file name and then come back over here to map properties new property background music and then I'll just paste that on in there okay and by leaving out the um, the auto scroll uh, property it's just not gonna auto scroll okay all right so we've got a uh, background in there let's go over here to layer add new tile layer and let's go ahead and put in the foreground okay uh, if there's any question about the spelling of these layers again just always use the kind of master template here as uh, to check this out so foreground okay and again you're seeing that little tile icon right there so yep that's a tile a layer that we can draw on and let's just go find uh, some trees to kind of walk around in front of Oops, but that's okay. Let's throw that one in there. And let's put a few more objects in. I like this little uh, kind of walkway thing. I think that's neat. All right, now got that in there. So let's go and uh, actually make these um, objects collidable or some of them collidable I should say uh, save out the map uh, go back over here and again consulting with our template we're gonna create an object layer and we're gonna name it collision okay so just come over here uh, go to add object layer collision okay and at this point I think it's a good idea to well, you don't necessarily have to. I think it's a good idea to go and um, click on Snap to Grid, which actually I already am, so that's fine. And let's begin um, uh, drawing or inserting a polygon here. So click this tool and just going to click right there. Click there, click there. And then uh, when you're done, just uh, right click or well, escape doesn't do it, but right click that uh, releases it. And then uh, let's come over here and we'll make the edge of the world here as well. And you know, I'm drawing my points in here counterclockwise, which is just kind of a habit uh, I formed uh, using a, a Vector Pro uh, program for making box 2D shapes. Shapes. I don't think you have to draw counterclockwise in here, but um, uh, I'm pretty sure you don't have to. But uh, why not? Okay, and then let's see what else. Oh, well, that's probably enough for right now. So let's go ahead and save it out, and then go back over here to consult our template, and uh, let's go ahead and put in some entities. Your entity would be like your your enemy or your um, your player and even though the template doesn't well actually because the template doesn't have um, anything other than really the player actually now it's at uh, what is this over here oh that's probably a checkpoint um, you might want to go and look at one of the already completed maps just to double check what um, what type things go on what type layers so for example the objects uh, your coins and your mines uh, those, those go on the object layers and let's see uh, soldier okay I, I just tend to make things invisible if I'm, if I'm curious about what they are so that goes on an entity layer and let's see I believe there's one other one particles uh, that would be hmm. I don't know exactly what goes on that layer but I was thinking it was the teleporter but now that I'm thinking that remembering it I'm pretty sure yeah the teleporter is just another type of object so well, let's go ahead and do this let's go and uh, create add object layer let's put both of these in right now entities and uh, objects as well okay so our first uh, entity we should probably put in here would be and go over here to this tool select or no actually I'm sorry uh, insert object uh, let's put our player in so he can um, kind of fall down from the sky here. 
All right. Uh, I just drew in, you know, a box. <laughs> Nothing fancy there. Go over here to Object Properties. Call this or name it Player. Uh, and then the more important thing actually is giving it a, the type and um, put in Player as well there. Again, if you uh, aren't positive that you're uh, putting in the right names, just come over here to the template, object properties, player, player, perfect. And there's no other uh, properties down uh, here to include either. So, okay, we should uh, have our player in there. Oh, well, one thing though, if you ever kind of made a mistake and uh, thought you drew something on the wrong layer, what you can do is you can right click on it and you can say move object to, and then you can put it to whatever object layer you um, really intended it to be at so all right and uh, you can see that the um, the templates here have entities uh, as a kind of a blue outline shape you can do that same thing over here uh, right click on this go over here to layer properties and see that color there you go so we can make that blue as well all right, now let's go ahead and put some objects in here. So again, with the insert object tool, oh, I always think it's fun to kind of fall down. And um, hey, I'm trying to put one right there. And uh, kind of grab a bunch of coins as you fall. So I'm gonna right click on this. Let's go over here to uh, object properties. I'm gonna call this coin and set the type to coin, which you think of type as just a class, okay? Uh, once you've done that, uh, let's go over and let me consult with uh, this map for a second. Let's see, they have all those uh, objects as green, so let's just go ahead and do that. Same thing over here. Let's change the layer properties to green. Click on OK. And let's see, oops. Let's right click on it. Well, actually, we'll go over to duplicate object because I do want a few of them. And after I do that, I should probably be using the select object uh, tool. So there we go. Copy and paste works just as well. Copy paste. Okay. Uh, what the heck? Let's put a few more in. Some ones to jump after. All right, terrific. Save that out, and now uh, let's go and put in a teleporter. These guys are fun. Uh, we want to, well, let me double check with this map. So it's definitely on objects, right? Our teleporter, there's a teleporter. Yep, okay. And go to object properties on this one. Uh, this one's name is Teleporter 1. It's a type teleporter and it's it has a property called Destination which is going to be uh, Teleporter 3 uh, which is right up here. Okay, Object Properties, Teleporter 3. Okay, so uh, let's go and do exactly uh, that same thing. Alright, so go over here to Add Object. I'll just put this right here. Right click on it, Object Properties. Teleporter one. Type in teleporter here. New property. Destination. Of course, be sure that you spell everything exactly as it is in either the templates or existing maps. And we'll send this to teleporter. Let's change it up a little bit. We'll we'll put in here two instead of three. And now let's scoot over this way. We could um, just copy and paste this guy. So let's just go and uh, oops. move this uh, over here. Uh, obviously, though, we want to go back over here to Object Properties and change this to Teleporter 2. And then we'd want to get rid of this property because I would imagine that would just keep sending you back to where you were. And uh, this is actually kind of like a gotcha teleporter because uh, it's sending you to kind of no man's land to just drop down and eventually die. If uh, the character go falls below the, um, well, outside of the stage, essentially, it uh, it's bad news. You uh, get killed. All right, so we're actually at a point where I think we can save this out and uh, test it. Remember, we can only work on the iPhone simulator, the lower resolution one at this moment, because we haven't actually created a map 
for the uh, the higher resolution ones. Um, so let's give it a shot, and uh, maybe we'll have to include those as well before we give it a real test build. But let's see see what happens here. All right, so um, just go and uh, hit run. Okay, one thing we'll do is we'll uh, just turn the music off for right now. There we go. Get my volume back to normal. And uh, let's get ready to play. By the way, I did um, pause the uh, screen capture software and I came back because uh, what did I, I needed to do was actually delete out the past version of um, the app that was stored on my uh, iPhone simulator. For whatever reason, occasionally uh, it caches information and for some reason it wasn't pulling up. Uh, the correct map. Uh, now it's pulling it up fine. And also, too, I just wanted to um, play through the first board because after deleting the app, then I had to play the first one. You guys don't need to see me do that uh, yet again. Okay, so turns out, look, here I am. And look at that. I'm grabbing some coins, floating on down here. And I can jump up. Um, the, uh, the teleporter. Sends me over here, and actually, I <clears throat> because it took a while to render the video, I got bored and I started putting some more stuff into that map. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll talk about that in one brief moment. But there you go, you can see that I just kind of uh, fell off the uh, the bottom of the stage after going through the teleporter. So everything is working uh, very well, and uh, now uh, let's do this. Let's go and slide that off to the side. Uh, and then take a look at the continuing adventures of uh, what's going on in Tiled. Okay, so I didn't really change much of anything other than I did put in a checkpoint. All right, so if you right-click over here and go to Object Properties, uh, you just put in checkpoint and then checkpoint for the type as well. Be sure that is uh, up on your objects layer. And now here's something that is uh, really cool. Uh, what you can do is create another object, uh, this one, uh, you don't have to name it, I guess, apparently, but you can. And uh, more importantly, this is called a type. And what you can do is set this to be whatever size you want, okay? Uh, and it is going to um, erase what is in the background, okay? So you can see that, uh, if I kind of toggle this on and off, I painted... Uh, some tiles, this one in particular, in the background there, and uh, it just becomes one of those, you know, standard kind of side scroller things where it uh, it goes away on you after a certain amount of time, and uh, that time too is something that we can set. But in case you missed it before, if you just watch, as soon as it fades away, I start falling down. So uh, let's uh, right click on this guy and uh, look at those properties really quick. Oops, I am on the wrong layer though. Here we go object properties and disappear time so obviously you can set this uh, higher or lower um, stopped I, I didn't actually explore what that um, what that does exactly so we'll play around with that but um, there you go uh, pretty nifty that it uh, fades away those uh, those background blocks I think is pretty cool but of course too you you could throw in a um, something in the foreground and if unless I am mistaken, I don't think that that fades away as well. That would stay. So let's see if we can kind of um, test out this theory of mine. Um, what we'll do is I want to grab one block that we can kind of see through. Oh, this is a good one. Here we go. All right, so I'm drawing in the background. All right, uh, let's just put this here. And we'll do these guys. Okay. What the heck? Let's put a couple blocks in there. All right, now uh, I'll save it out. Let's go back over here to Xcode and let's run this guy again. Pretty fun, isn't it? Okay, here we go. Play it. Yep, sure enough, the foreground stayed, but the background went away. All right. Okay, so let's have a little bit more fun. Uh, I opened up uh, Map 26 here to um, show you guys some of the other possibilities. You've got tanks you can throw in here, uh, mines, obviously, that would damage you, uh, soldiers. There's an agent in here somewhere. And the neat thing is, is that um, 
this, uh, the width of these object blocks here determine where the uh, the agent or soldier or boss is going to uh, wander around in. So let's go ahead and set that up. Uh, I am going to be on my entities layer for this and I just want to go and insert an object. I'm going to put this all the way across here. There we go. Uh, right click on it, go to object properties, let's call this one boss. I think these guys are a little bit tougher to kill. And then there we go, save that out. Uh, one fun thing you can do as well is let's go back up over here to objects and I'm going to do this. I want to create an object. Oh, there we go. Actually, I'm going to move it down here and make it. I can select, there we go, double wide. Uh, now I can paint into the background, just like we did with the, um, the surface that was going to uh, float away. I'm going to paint these um, blocks back there, and I'll turn this into a movable uh, background, like so. Let me uh, go back over here to Objects, and then just right click on it, Object Properties. I'll just name it Brick, set the type to Brick. New property, this will be mass, and I'm going to set this to 30. You can play around with those numbers on your own. Click OK, save it, and uh, now when we run this again, we should um, have a boss that wanders around in that area to find, and also a, uh, a movable brick, which hopefully I can just kind of slam at this guy and push him off the screen. <laughs> Nice that stayed off. All right. Uh, okay. Come down here. Okay. See if I can push this thing. Yes. There we go. And it's also blocking the bullets. All right. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> okay. So let's add in here a movable block. These are pretty cool. Uh, first thing I'll do is uh, let's put in the the bl actual block this time that's going to move around, and ooh, let's see what should we go with here. Hmm. Some sort of piping. These are all pretty cool. Actually, this is a nice one. Uh, let's see. We'll have it start over here and go all the way out this way. Of course, I'm painting in the background. Then I'm going to jump over here to Objects, and we do want to insert an object. So I'm just going to drag along like so. Uh, Right-click on it, go over here to Object Properties. We'll just call this uh, Movable Block 1, and then this will just be Movable Block, so that's the class name. And then you've got a few um, properties down here. So let's see. Uh, first one is destination. And we'll call this, or actually, we're going to send this to target one, which is going to be another object itself. Speed. Uh, let's go with the 0 0.1. 0 0.5 is pretty quick. I just tested this a moment ago with 0.5, and I thought it was a little too fast to at least jump on with the uh, crude controls of the, uh, the simulator. And then you can also put in here a damage value. Uh, 100 would kill you immediately, but uh, let's just put in here zero, so it's uh, it's not going to really do any damage at all. Uh, click OK, and then let's go and create that uh, that target, which we'll just put right here. Right click again, and for this one, all you have to do is actually just name it. So there you go, target. Save this out. Uh, let's head over here to Xcode, and let's run it again. I just kind of missed the boat there, didn't I? <laughs> well, that's okay. I gotta get my uh, keys ready. All right, so two fingers holding down Option and then Shift. I can kind of lock them. Gotta be re ready to move and jump at the same time here. So here we go. All right, 
And sure enough, look at that. Moving along. I get to to the edge. Let's, let's jump off. Oh, okay, there we go. And, oh, there you go. I'm gonna die, but <laughs> obviously that works. Okay, I think you guys get the hang of uh, adding objects in here. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just quickly kind of go through a few more. Uh, you've also got a mine, which I'm sure you guys saw in the demo there. If you uh, right click and go to object properties, all you have to do is put in mine, type is mine, and then the uh, the damage I set to 90, which is 90%, uh, kind of a more reasonable amount would be probably about 25%, 50%. So you can only, only get you know, hit by it a few times. Uh, click OK and uh, that'll create a mine there. The more interesting one that I'm going to demo in a second is going to be the laser. Uh, you just define these either um, in a vertical uh, strip or a horizontal strip and it will um, create a laser for you. Uh, so the object properties here are uh, name laser, type laser, and then the uh, flicker interval is uh, so every two seconds. All right, and uh, then this piping over here is just uh, part of the background art. Okay, so you can make it uh, be anything you want. Um, it's your choice. And let's save it out and go uh, take a look at what these are doing over here at Xcode. Um, one of the cool things about the lasers is they uh, they automatically uh, make a sound effect, but if you had like, you know, 20 of them on your level, you wouldn't want, obviously want all of them uh, playing their sound effect at once. So the, the sound is only uh, triggered when you get, um, you know, within a certain range of it. And here we go. Okay, so there's that uh, mine. All right, obviously took out 20% here. And then if I get over here, there you go. You can kind of see that laser occurring. Well, you might have seen it up there, but I assure you it is. And um, like I said, if I get close enough to it, it'll make that type of noise. And just a couple more of the essentials uh, you could also put in on our objects layer. Object properties, one called drink, that's uh, your health. All right. And then you could also add in here object properties. A diamond and um, that is your special item for the board okay so over here in your uh, plist file in data plist uh, if, you, if you basically just turn this to a special item um, actually it's it's I'm sorry it's already defaulted to no um, so uh, basically, if you end up collecting that special item, which is the diamond, um, just internally in Xcode, that'll switch to yes. And then that way, when uh, next time you go to the menu, uh, it'll show that you've uh, found the special item for that board. So uh, these special items, they always stay no then, just in the, be the beginning of uh, the game. So you don't have to change that. And let's see, while we're here, is there anything kind of else we should talk about? Um, no, I think uh, we've gone through that. Uh, let's go and mention one more thing over here in Tiled. Uh, if you don't want to use the um, background image, um, you know, that you would specify uh, in here for map properties, you can also go and paint an entire uh, background image uh, well, obviously just part of your background, but you could do it as uh, one panel by simply, watch this, just grab this panel right here, go over to my background and uh, the bucket fill tool. So that would, uh, that would paint in there. See, look at that. The entire board now has uh, that uh, kind of cave-like appearance. I'm going to hit undo on that though. Okay, so you've got your map all done, and uh, of course it's just the low resolution version, the SD one. Uh, now it's time to think about the HD one. Now you could go and uh, create a brand new uh, tiled file. Uh, of course you'd want to set the, uh, the tiles to be 64 by 64 instead of 32 by 32 as they currently are now. Or if you were doing the Dash iPad HD version, that one would be 128 by 128. Uh, now let me show you guys something really quick though. Let's go into our cool kit, go to our resources folder, go to our maps. 
All right, uh, who are we gonna pick on here? The one I'm using, of course. I'm gonna open this up in a text editor, and this is your entire board right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll down, back up. Look, it's not that much, okay? Uh, we see a lot of coins here. Uh, we see our teleporter, things like that. And uh, you'll recognize a lot of the things that we've entered in as properties for these things, like the movable block here, damage, destination, speed, all this stuff. Uh, point is, there's actually not a lot to this, okay? And uh, the, the, um, the only kind of unobvious thing is this um, compressed uh, data for uh, where the actual tile artwork uh, is on the uh, on the board here, but otherwise, uh, you know, everything is kind of obvious, really. So, if you were to go and compare, for example, a couple of the maps that were already done, uh, let's pick on the map template. I'm going to put this over here, and then the map template HD. Open these guys up side by side. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. X is zero. X is zero. Five seventy six for the Y. Okay, well, double that is eleven fifty two nine sixty. Uh, doesn't that turn out to be 1920, 64, 128? You go through here and you realize that. Uh, these are really just doubling numbers, okay? Uh, this uh, kind of core compressed part here, that actually is the same number there, so that stayed the same. And, uh, you know, the important things like tile width, those are obviously doubled as well. So you think, huh, well, you know, I could save myself time instead of reboarding the re rebuilding the entire board or reboarding it. Uh, I could just go through here and change all these numbers. And then you would think, you know what, maybe I should Google to see if someone else has created a script <laughs> that will do this for me, and sure enough, someone has. So go over here to this guy's uh, website, uh, Wasabi Bit, <laughs> all right? Uh, this, uh, this developer was nice enough to give us the scripts to do that. So if you go and download this file, okay, it's uh, gonna be a zip file, you're just gonna unzip it, and it will turn out somewhere over here. Let me just move that out of the way. Uh, this actually is a, a file that I brought in. This is, of course, just my TMX file right here. Uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> when, I, when I work with experimental things, I tend to like to pull a copy out and, uh, you know, not mess with the original. So uh, here is the actual script itself. Uh, this is a terminal script. We don't actually even need these uh, files. I think they might be incorporated into the, the project already, but as, as you'll see in a moment, uh, you can kind of ignore them. Uh, so what we're going to do is open up our terminal application, which of course if you're develop developing on a map, Mac, you uh, already have. Uh, this application just uh, it's in your utilities folder and of course if you installed Cocos T 2D you should be familiar with it. I'm just gonna go and open up a new terminal window and uh, first thing we'll do is just drag in that right there okay and uh, you kinda wanna follow along with the uh, the syntax it's telling you it's, the the script is expecting okay and uh, the first thing we're going to put in here is the file in okay this is the one that we're going to be converting to either um, high definition or or low definition it'll go both ways so uh, now I will uh, kind of keep things simple as well and just drag in that file okay so it's going to put in that entire location there and let's keep following the prompts so the next one is going to be our out file okay so then you just put that in there and uh, for this we can just write in cartoon smart uh, oh actually let's back that up let's put map cartoon smart dash HD TMX and then this is an important one the dash scale uh, since I'm going from uh, SD to HD I want that to be 2.0 all right if I was going from HD to um, 
SD, I would want that to be 0 0.5. And as you can see, it's um, it's suggesting things inside of these little brackets here that you could use. So 0 0.5, 2.0, or any number. Uh, the dash suffix for HD, uh, I don't know what this does exactly because I already put in um, the suffix over here for my out file. So maybe it uh, maybe it gets ignored. That doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put in HD anyway. And then um, suffix action. Oh, well, you know what? <laughs> I think I just answered my own question. I'm going to put in none here. So, and that's what I did last time. And that's probably why it, uh, it uh, didn't do anything with the suffix. So as you can see, the other options there are add or remove. Uh, let's leave it as none. And then for the XML version, I uh, just put this at 1.0 as suggested. And then XML encoding, we'll just uh, again go with their suggestion here for UTF-8. And then to be honest, out condensed, I, oops, I don't know what this does either. I'll just put yes. And um, you won't get anything spectacular happening over there, but you should now see. Sorry, I wasn't seeing the file there, and I realized it's for a very obvious reason. Uh, the file did get created, but it got created in uh, my main hard drive, which is, or actually my user folder there. There we go. Uh, so what I should have done before running the script was write uh, CD, and then if I wanted it to end up right here, what I could have done then is just taken that, the folder that contained the script, and then um, CD is for change director, directory or move folder, and then it would have created it uh, right there. Well, anyway, so I do have that, uh, that file, so let me go open this up and if you try to open it up from uh, your wherever it is at you're gonna get this error right here error loading tile set because it does need to live um, in the same folder where this is at okay and there's actually one or two other changes we need to make first uh, so let's do this let me go ahead and uh, just drag this um, the newly created file in there and I don't want to overwrite the one that I currently have, so what I'm going to do is just uh, give it a quick uh, rename, and uh, then before opening this up in the tiled, I'm going to open it up in a text editor. Uh, you'll see everything's kind of crammed together. It's not as pretty as it was before. Uh, what we want to look for here is the tile set name. So this is going to be dash HD. Okay, and let me just compare this with the um, with my other one to make sure I got that correct. Okay, so it's actually that's the you want to look for the dot png part as well. There we go. So dash hd, and now if we open this up in tiled, it uh, well it'll give you this little warning first, but should open up just fine. Hey, there we go. Okay, so if you scroll down, you can see oops, there's our uh, whole little world that we created before. Everything is looking good except for one little problem. We're going to need to uh, change the polygons here. All right, and that's not too much to ask of us because we just go over here to our, uh, coll uh, yeah, our collisions layer, just select the polygon. Uh, you've got the polygon uh, selection tool there and just move these guys over here. Really, there's not that much extra work to do compared to having to rebuild the entire map or uh, oops, or do all the calculations ourselves. There we go. Well, we got that selected. And then, of course, I just have that one other one over here. Pull that guy over there. And by the way, I do have a snap to, to grid on, and I think that tends to help uh, 
move these polygons around. Okay, so that um, that would do it. I've actually already tested this um, just with this exact same larger map over here. I did uh, run it through uh, my phone and everything played exactly like it should have, so that's a good sign. And of course, uh, for the iPad HD versions, you want to do that. Um, you want to run that same exact script again, uh, making any you know same changes we did, uh, renaming the um, the tile set inside of there to the uh, dash iPad HD one. And for the uh, iPad HD, you're going from um, tiles that are 64 by 64 to 128 by 128. So again, you just want to make set your scale property. Uh, to 2.0 so it just doubles everything in size and uh, do that and you should be good to go of course uh, don't forget as well that uh, you do need to import in your resource okay so put it into the maps folder and let it live there okay I think that uh, actually does it for talking about tiled I'll uh, come back in a separate video and we will discuss uh, scaling or uh, just changing the images uh, using your really any sprite sheet generation software. All right, so let's talk about sprite sheets and kind of more specifically, uh, this gets into really taking ownership of the game because um, you know if you're gonna if you're gonna do this, do it right. Uh, add in your own characters, uh, your own primary player here. Um, and, and I would say try to re rely on the uh, included assets as uh, little as possible. The, um, the artist that did do these has given them out uh, freely. He just wants uh, permission to uh, use them. But, you know, and I, I, I kind of err on the side of um, just, you know, doing it on your, do it on your own and, and making something really unique to yourself. Uh, so... The, uh, the thing to do here is to uh, basically just rebuild these sprite sheets that are currently in here with uh, the same names as uh, the existing uh, frames, okay? So when in doubt, uh, go over here to the, the P-list, for example, with the player, and fold down frame, and these would be all the frames that you would want to uh, include in your sprite sheet. And uh, if you were to hire an artist, which is a very good idea to, if you're not a pixel artist, if you were to hire an artist, you'd want them to give you um, the, the exact same name files for um, for each one of these uh, sequences, okay? So let's see, you've got here, um, looks like 16 frames of, a, of the character uh, drinking the, the potion or whatever. And uh, obviously the first one, CC player drink and so on like that. So that's uh, that's important to keep the same number of frames uh, per action essentially, all right, and, and player go. They're all kind of obvious here, idle, uh, jump, and so on like that. And the original files, uh, I pointed this out in the overview, are contained in the raw resources folder here and they're actually divided up um, into kind of subfolders uh, per action okay but uh, when they are brought together in the sprite sheet generation software they're all included into the same sheet okay so as you can see they're all on this same sheet right here okay now, when you're generating the sheet, uh, what you're going to do is open up a program like uh, SwapText. This is a very uh, common one. And you essentially just uh, take all of those frames and then dump them in here. All right, so here we go. We've got CC Player. Uh, these are all the knife frames. Okay, so importing sprites. Uh, I'm not going to do every one of these because I'm not going to actually export anything out here that we're going to use. But, okay importing more sprites and you can see that it uh, puts them all on top of each other you go over here and you hit layout and it's gonna lay them out for you alright and uh, again it's giving you the the same frame names over here you don't need a uh, sprite sheet this big for this few of frames okay so uh, you can kind of set this down to whatever kind of amount covers everything. Uh, if you made it too small, for example, like 64 by 64, you can see that it's starting to overlap these guys again, and it should give you some indication like, well, there you go. It's kind of obvious they're overlapping. Uh, and, you know, your, ultimately your same source files, uh, your same sprite sheet files are going to be about the same size as um, 
the existing ones because uh, another thing to keep in mind here is for everything to kind of you know fit back together perfectly again you'll want to have an artist or you, you will want to make the kind of same size shape for the uh, the player okay and that's not to say you can't have any variation on that but I think it's just probably gonna be in your best interest to uh, kind of use these as a, a molding for the uh, the character artwork you draw in there and then of course after this we uh, you can discover here and hit uh, publish now keep in mind you're gonna make a sprite sheet for uh, your SD size your HD size and even though you can't really see it here in Xcode that's twice as big as the this one and then of course your biggest one which is gonna be your um, iPad HD one okay so you, you make separate um, sprite sheets and you have separate plist files uh, that correspond to those as well and, and as you can see it's the same frame names in here for all of these guys so when you're creating these your best bet is going to be obviously to uh, work at your higher resolution and um, then shrink down for your smaller ones each time creating a uh, different set of images and uh, I've uh, I've got a, uh, a video up on YouTube uh, under the Cartoon Smart Lessons account so youtube.com slash cartoon smart lessons and if you were just to search through what I have if uh, search the keyword resizing or resize and I've got a, a tutorial on uh, uh, creating an action in Photoshop which is gonna just kinda batch resize things uh, it'll also take care of um, batch renaming as well but you don't have to do that um, in fact you shouldn't do that uh, your f your original frame names regardless of their iPad HD or HD or SD can all stay the same just as long as um, your plist and your PNG here have that uh, that proper extension in there okay so uh, from here, like I said, you can just go over here to publish, uh, hit OK, and well, let's see, default, I didn't define any sort of, let's see, publish settings here. Uh, save file to, PNG format, compression, none. Uh, let's see, you're going to want a Cocos 2D playlist, and uh, you can just add another target here, let's see. Um, the target will be CC player. Okay, so that name goes in. Say target name format extension. Let's just go ahead and put it somewhere so we we know things are working. I'll just send this to the uh, the desktop and scale well this is this is a nice feature that you can scale things up or down so that um, you know for pixel art you can kinda get away with some imperfect scaling and by imperfect scaling I mean um, it's supposed to look pixelated so it's not a big deal if you were to take your SD graphics if that's what you had available to you and double size them or um, you know quadruple size them okay so let's just hit done and then publish and Okay, so that's all right. Ah, I should have saved out the project. That's part of the problem here. Go uh, the fix this. It's uh, I just forgot to actually browse to the location I want to save this, and put in the name as ccplayer.plist. Okay, you can see I already successfully did this once. Okay, replace it. That's fine. Uh, again, be sure you have that set. And otherwise, uh, you just I deleted out one of the other targets there. So the default one is gone and now click done and we should be good to go okay and sure enough it uh, created this uh, the plist for me over here um, we let me open it up just to show you guys what these look like of course uh, this one would be incomplete just considering that I didn't include in all the frames that uh, I should have over here but uh, as usual, these plists are just kind of look a little bit like XML files, and uh, then it also saved out the uh, the corresponding .png file, which of course is also incomplete as it doesn't have all those frames. But that is how you would generate your own sprite sheets. Again, keep them the same name as everything that's already in there. When in doubt, go check with the original 
source files um, and then you can see that there's uh, there's quite a lot of um, possible spreadsheets that you could replace um, in here but uh, I'd go for just kind of dealing with some of the main ones look at this enemies all the tanks and stuff like that you can add pretty cool and then uh, it should kind of go without saying but uh, the same thing's true for sounds. <laughs> Fortunately, you don't have to make a, a P list for these guys, but uh, if you do want to replace the audio that is uh, currently in here, you would just uh, replace those exact same uh, file names. And it looks like they have a little bit of a very a variety of, uh, <laughs> I didn't notice this before, waves, MP3s. Uh, I saw a CAF in here somewhere. I always call those CAF files. Uh, MP3, M4A, so uh, yeah, a whole variety of <laughs> audio options. Uh, and then let's see what else we could possibly talk about here. Well, we uh, I mentioned this early in the tiled video, but the uh, the backgrounds are kind of obvious too. They uh, you've got your uh, various uh, iPad HD, um, you've got even the Mac ones over here too. So that's something to keep in mind when you're going through and replacing all these guys. Uh, again just use whatever size that they currently have in there and you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't have any sort of problems and uh, you know speaking of the Mac if you did, did want to export toward it uh, what you do is you pull down over here and uh, go like this and then you uh, you build your file it um, it will um, then run as a uh, Macintosh application so it'll show up on your, um, your actual toolbar which of course never gets screen captured in my case because it's so far down at the bottom of the screen but uh, and then if you ever, if you ever want to know where the location of that file is you can just um, right click on it it'll find it in the finder uh, kind of as usual with all their applications and uh, I've never actually played around with um, building a Mac app from I mean I, I did it for this um, template but I've never actually built one so it's it's kind of interesting to have that option it does play very cool and of course when you're testing out um, your levels and things like that what you'd probably want to do is um, export out the Mac copy as well or at least build to it because or to your device because it is quite difficult to test out the the running and jumping uh, with the uh, the simulator so at least go for one of your phones or your devices and then you've got the Mac option as well Okay, um, that about does it for um, talking about sprite sheets and replacing the artwork for uh, this template. D and also, don't forget, consider hiring a developer. There's uh, some great uh, pixel artists out there, and uh, you know everybody could use a little extra work these days. So don't feel like you have to do everything on your own.